This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek, show number 408, recorded on July 11th, 2019. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way in your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Carlson, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios. And Mike, honestly, we should be outside tonight. We really should. These are the nights you podcast outside. It's beautiful weather, blue sky, not terribly hot. I mean, still your upper 80s, lower 90s, but there's not as much humidity. Feels perfect. Almost none. I could feel... We kind of had a wind come in last night. I'd taken Sarah out for dinner, and it was really, really windy. And you could feel the cool air kind of coming in. And I think we're going to get down into the middle 60s tonight, which for July. Uh, doesn't gonna, happen very often around no, here. No, doesn't happen very often at all. In fact, it's been a good night also. I'm doing some uh, foundational work for my landscaping out here. i got to do some concrete block. And so I've been digging out. I've been digging trenches. I laid a new um, drain for the house. And uh, I was doing that Sunday when it was really hot. I should be out there like tonight getting that. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not. We're podcasting tonight because that's what's important because that's what you do. Of course, we post them with show notes. By the way, this week, starting this week, I'm going to start providing full transcripts for you. So we've been using, we'll talk a little bit about it uh, later, but we've been using a service or I'm going to start using a service called Otter, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. They're really in the meeting space to try to do transcripts of meetings. That's kind of the intention. It's like, Apparently, what's said at meetings is important. I don't know if I've ever said anything important in a work meeting, but uh, you can record work meetings, and uh, it also works for podcasting. Pretty cool. If you want to see an example of that, head out to theaverageguy.tv slash forward slash HGG408. Uh, we'll get you there. And uh, from here on out, I think I'm going to try to provide word for word um, transcripts in the show notes, which would be kind of fun. Give me your feedback on that if you're interested or if it works out of course we post those at the average guy.tv don't forget you can also join us live on our mobile app here and on the road if you want to get it done that way available easy to get to home gadgetgeeks.com android iphone it's free our patreon subscribers help pay for that every single year it does cost a little bit to do that on spreaker so we appreciate that a couple new subscribers on patreon as well if you haven't done that yet um, i should mention for the five dollar level now ron we're providing these so if you if you're new, all the five dollars or more subscribers got these coins. But if you're new, oops, I got it upside down. Ron made these for us, and Ron, appreciate you doing that as well. I've got a couple left. I have three. Yeah, I think I have three left. If you jump in at five bucks, we'll mail them to you. I promise. I figured out the mail system. You won't get charged. <laughs> the post. You won't get that nasty gram from the post office that we. Uh, opened yeah, to. it does cost me three or four bucks to get it done. Yeah. We'll get it mailed to you. Appreciate your sponsorship on the Patreon side, Ron. Thanks for doing that. I don't need any yet. He had pinged me earlier in the week, uh, but uh, for now, if you subscribe at the five dollar level, we have a one dollar plan. If you want to do it that way, but five dollars will get you this coin as well. We appreciate you doing that. Join us out in the Discord group as well. We could always use some more traffic out there and a good place to have a conversation. Head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. Guys, I don't make it too difficult. Theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. We'll get you in there and we can join it. Mike, we spent a little time off. We did. Kind of nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, when it's so weird because you, you think it's just two shows, but really it's three weeks of, yeah. of time. Yeah. When you uh, when you take two weeks off of the show, you kind of forget. I kind of forget. You don't have to worry about this. You have you've got the glory job here. You show up on Thursday, get hammered while we podcast, and then you just go to bed. Right? Yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty pretty true. Pretty easy job here. Uh, I have the same relationship with Dave Jackson on Saturday mornings. I show up to his podcast, get he, hammered then, at nine in the morning, and then, yeah, nine o'clock, and then, then go to bed. You know, same thing. and yeah. and uh, whatever else, whiskey sours, whatever else you drink on a Saturday morning. A lot of coffee, just to be honest. But uh, Dave does all the work. Uh, so for me, basically, this is we get done with the podcast. Uh, we as soon as we do the post show and we're done, I give it a few minutes. It usually renders for me on YouTube about that time. And then um, I download it and start doing all the processing. There's a whole bunch of things you got to get it done. I got to get into into to uh, Movie Maker so I can do the edits on it and you know, this and that and get all these things done. 
So then by Friday, most of it's rendered and done and whatever. And so I start uploading at places. Takes a while to get those things there. Saturday, I usually write the show notes and they get it posted sometimes Saturday morning. Takes five or six hours to get each one of these podcasts done. It's just a one to six to one ratio kind of deal. Um, taking two weeks off, it was kind of nice to, I got to spend a little more time at Havana, which was super great. That, uh, that worked out as well. We should have known. Our, That's where you would have been. Right? Havana's our cigar yeah. shop, by the way. Yeah. And if you're, if you're wondering. And then, um, but it was nice. It was, it was nice, refreshing. I did spend a little time reaching out um, to some potential guests here for the future. So we, we, I took that time to kind of load some of those up and Mike just rest. It was kind of nice. Yeah. I'm not going to The rest of that was, that was a big thing for us as we were, you know, 4th of July weekend, obviously is always hectic. You're, you're with family and friends and it's a bunch of time, but the, the week before that was, was great just to kind of take that week and, and enjoy it. Enjoy a Thursday night. Um, Hannah didn't know what to do with me though on a Thursday night. She's like, well, why are you up here? <laughs> What can you can you can you go back downstairs for a little bit? Go pretend <laughs> these are these are my nights, she says. <laughs> well, it was nice. I had uh, Fourth of July was one of those nights, so we didn't. You know, it's big U.S. holiday, uh, throwing off the shackles of the ruthless Great Britain, and uh, but it it also was um, uh, the week before. It was just kind of. I'm not going to lie. It was just kind of soul healing to kind of not have to worry about. And listen, I really love what we do here. This is, this is some of the most fun that I ever have is coming on, but grinding through 407 shows. It's a lot after a while. It was just nice to take a break, get kind of a renewed interest in it. It did give me the opportunity to took it, look at two different platforms. So one is what we're doing right now on video. So if you want to, if you're watching or listening to the audio of this in your car, you might want to come out to the YouTube channel, take a look. We are using StreamYard. Dave Jackson and I have been using this for, I don't know, the last six or seven weeks on Ask the Podcast Coach. I just recently started using it on uh, at the Gallup uh, Studios for the Gallup podcast that we're doing, and it's gotten really good reviews. You can, um, one, of the, one of the really cool things, so we've got split screen capabilities. I can also get a little bit wider look. So this is kind of the 16.9 look the whole studios are in. A lot of black, Mike says. Kind of a lot of black on the screens when I when I do it this way. There's some other options to move the guests around and such. I can go big screen here, Mike, a small screen on that one. I can share my screen, and that's got a couple different options. When we share screens, actually, Mike and I go small and then move over to the left hand side. I guess that's over here now. And um, and I don't know. I'm backwards. You're backwards. I don't know. We're you're forwards. We're forward well, to all you're you on, guys. Yeah. You're on the left. Yeah, when I, I point to my right, way. I think it goes this way. There you go. So um. Some new capabilities in StreamYard. Pretty cool. So far on the free plan and has been really, really cool. Um, I I can't imagine not continuing to use this. I'm hoping it'll get it'll continue it'll continue to improve it. It is basically a replacement for OBS or for some service that would plug directly into YouTube Live. And uh, and so it's drop dead simple. I send a StreamYard link to Mike and say, Hey, join me. It was Dude, dead simple right and then you don't have the overhead of obs on your side we're not having to connect skype and do screen capture all of that jazz you have to do so you know is this a direct just to youtube or do they have other destinations you could go to if you wanted to like can this go to twitch or anything like that or is it just youtube uh for, well uh, no actually they've got a bunch of different places you can go uh facebook let me let me actually look that up so stream yard hopefully this won't kick me off when i do this yeah, maybe this, maybe I shouldn't tempt fate while I'm doing that. But yeah, a, a bunch of different, and I think uh, definitely Facebook and YouTube are there. Um, let me look. I can on, look up on. Let me look on this. Hold on one second. Stream yarn. Um, so the, the thing, uh, one of the cool things about it is you're able to also bring in the chat. So like Ron says, wow, everyone's going to stream yarn. And uh, you can bring that chat in on the screen, which is really, really nice. Picture whatever you had in YouTube is there. And uh, Quizmo says, uh, good evening, guys. Happy to have you back after two weeks off. Well, it's glad to be back. So I like the audience interaction that we get here, being able to bring kind of the chat room in. So far, so good. They have a, I think it's a 20 or $25 a month plan that allows you kind of the premium. You could brand it. You could take this powered by StreamYard off of there. I don't know. For what we do, Mike, I don't know if I need much more. 
Yeah, I did. I did download OBS in the uh, in the interim those two weeks and tried it out. It's pretty. It's as complicated as everybody says it was, and uh, not knocking it. Super cool and a lot of capabilities in it. Yeah, learning curve's a little steep. You know. When you first get into it, definitely a little steep. Uh, it starts to make sense pretty quick, but even then, uh, the, it's going to be a lot more complicated than just firing up a browser and doing this. You know, yeah. like, this works great. And yeah. for what you and I do, we don't need anything more complicated than this, right? OBS is great for if you're streaming games and all of that, but uh, for just a talking head podcast, we just need to see us both. You know, th- this works. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, anytime you're like one of the great things about this really generous free plan, like really generous free plan, like as much as you want for free, basically what we're doing here right now, for the most right. part, free connects to, like I said, YouTube or Facebook. Um, yeah. YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope or your own custom RTMP stream. Mm-hmm. RTMP. Could I do that into a SightHound? Could I be broadcasting into SightHound? And I'm that's sorry. RTSP. Ah, darn it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. A little bit no. different. <laughs> good. Good to know. So um, I think um, I'm going to land here for now. At work, I'll probably pay for the premium. Here, we'll probably just use the free version. I can't imagine why we'd want to do anything different, at least at this point. Not imminent on YouTube going away or, or not Hangouts going away, at least at this point. We know they're going away at some point. So good switch. So it was a good couple weeks, two weeks productive. I also found while we were kind of on vacation and I was messing around with stuff, this actually came from one of my high school students and it's actually in all the podcasting group. I just kind of missed it, but a service called Otter. So O-T-T-E-R, otter.ai. Really they're a transcription service. You can feed the MP3 files into them and they're generous as well. 600 minutes a month on their free, free plan. The premium again, 20 bucks a month. So again, not terribly expensive. Actually, I could probably afford both of that with the Patreon subscribers, uh, what what they pay to do that. And um, it does, Mike, it does just a bang up job of transcriptions. I I can't, I can't, I would, it was hard for me to believe how good it was. So load the first file in, it attempts to then separate speakers. So it'll say speaker one, speaker two, speaker one, speaker two, or it, it attempts to at least separate those. Then you do a little training. So you go in there and you change some words and you move some things around and you tell it, you you separate who's speaking and when you tag it. So this is me. This is Mike. Um, Here, I'll just, uh, I don't know, just while we're talking about it, you can do screen sharing here on this. So let me open up this. Let's do the application. Well, let me share that. Yeah, right there. So let's share that. And then, okay. So you can see how now, Share screen, Mike and I go over to the left-hand side, small. But you can see Home Gadget Geeks right here. This was 406, and then this is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geeks, right? You can kind of see the transcriptions. There's me, there's Mike, me again. Ron joined us on 406. So Ron didn't show up, and I did 407 the first time, Mike. And then I kind of trained it on our two voices. And then when I came and loaded this one, 406, it recognized me and it recognized you and it put speaker one as Ron because it didn't recognize it. So I went through and found some long spots where Ron was talking and just tagged Ron in here. Here's a long section here. He was talking a little bit. And how uh, long is it going to take to give to spit this out for you? So you upload the MP3. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking here. This is a, this is the full transcription. Is this an hour, a few minutes? Yeah. Uh, no, about 20, 20, 20 25 minutes. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it goes pretty fast. <laughs> I'm the, and, and the accuracy is crazy good. It's like, it's so good. It, 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 it accurately gets when I do things wrong, (laughs) you know, when I say things wrong, it gets it and it, it spells them weird. And if I say it's, I just said it's, 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 it puts that in three times. It just does it straight. Does not, not, he's not trying to correct this for, uh, for publication for grammar. No, no, no. It's really just trying to do full transcripts. And, um, you know, you can see in this statement here, like Ron said, I've seen printers for up to a thousand, even more. Okay. For the home user, it seems as some as low as 200 bucks. Like it gets that. I didn't fix that. It, it did these, it did these, I believe it's 1400. Now, for some reason, it didn't put the dollar sign in front of the 1400 where it did the 700 and the 799 and the 1000. Right. And so it's really making some efforts to get things correct in here. So. We're going to continue to use that 
I think at this point, I'm going to continue starting with this episode. We're going to feed those in. I want to continue because I'm going to do this at Gallup. I want to continue to kind of figure some of this stuff out. Pretty cool. I don't think this audience, Mike, is that keen to getting transcripts. I, I, I don't know. You can tell me, Jim, at the average guy.tv, if you're happy, I'm finally including transcripts. That's a big deal on the Gallup side. But Mike, do you think our audience cares much about transcripts? So is the plan then, are you still going to have the regular show notes like up top? And yeah. then if you scroll down, then the full transcript will be there. Yep. I think that's great. I think it's the best of both worlds. I do think it'll help with, uh, you know, if someone's really trying to find someone we talked about, like a detail, especially if they just go out to the average guy website, they click on the episode, then they can, you know, control F and try and really find it. I think, I think that's helpful. And it definitely helps for uh, SEO purposes. Yeah. So having that entire transcription in there, Helps a lot. Yeah. And the transcript, because they're kind of long, there won't be a lot of spaces in there. But like Mike said, a control F and then search for that term, probably yeah. the best way, probably the best probably way to go through to the it. website and doing it there in the browser would probably be the best way, I would guess. Yeah. I might even include the link. Maybe I'll do this. So the regular show notes, and then I'll say transcriptions provided by otter.ai. And I'll put the link back to otter.ai where you can... On the site, if you go there, you can play it and watch the the words move along like karaoke, and that might that might be interesting as well. Just an opportunity for it's you. Be my new thing, like when I used to watch the uh, the miner for um, for burst coin. You know, it's almost like the lot. You can just watch it as it goes along. You know, one of the other pod, the main podcasts I listen to, and and this wouldn't apply too much to us because we don't do too many links to things, um, but. One of the podcasts I listened to, they actually ended up saying, here's all of our show notes, not transcription, but show notes. And you could subscribe to it and get it in your inbox as soon as we've released the episode. And I, at first I was like, why would anyone want that? I don't really, if I want the show notes, I can go. But man, I tell you, I'm listening on the drive to work and then I show up to work and it's in my inbox. And I'm like, what was that thing they were talking about? And I go, I click on the email. And there it is. There's the links. Boom. I'm there yeah. because you always think, oh, I'll go back and I'll, 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 I'll go look at that link later. And then you'd kind of never remember. So that email is kind of a nice reminder. And then it's available to you because a lot of times when you're driving, you don't have the ability to go be clicking on links and finding things. So I thought that was actually a decent idea for if you have the type of show notes where there's a lot of links that people are going to be clicking yeah. on. Yeah. Well, oh, interested. If you're interested in the in getting an email of the show notes for everything we do, send me send me an email. Let me know. Jim at the average guy TV, I guess. If I got enough people interested in that's just a little plug in that you use whenever you publish it, it automatically, I guess I could tie that into my MailChimp. Yeah, it's something. just a MailChimp, right? Yeah. Just copy and paste in a MailChimp I and think it is. scheduling that to go out, you know, uh, like right as the other one's released, right as yeah. the podcast is released. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. You know, not, my, not that long at all. No. It's not even format. There's no extra stuff in there. It's just the show notes in an email. Yeah. 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 No, that, that, may, that may be interesting. I've got a list of listeners that we've had for, you know, I used to send out little notes to everybody. Um, but um, if you like the show notes in the form of an email, maybe that'd be kind of cool. Send me an email, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv and let me know. And uh, we can talk about it. I want to thank Kevin Schoonover. Um, he sent us, he was out, he was out at a conference or something and they had micro bits. We didn't get them in the retail box, which is kind of interesting. So micro bits is a, has been and is a really popular kind of microcontroller. Allows you, there's all kinds of peripherals for this kind of thing. I think of it like a Raspberry Pi, but even smaller. Kind mm -hmm. of designed for kind of uh, yeah, high school. Like kind of say thing. it again. Yeah, like Arduino. Okay. Yeah, just like it. This comes with a little, uh, little uh, a battery pack, some batteries, USB port to plug into so you can power the board and then you can program it. And there's some programming stuff that you can do. And then you can buy components for it. And it's a great way to learn code. I was going to really, say, this is something like you and your, like me and Emmett, you know, right? Can start yeah. to bunch of fun with. Yeah. Excited. That'll be cool. Yeah. I have one. There's actually one sitting right above my head right there that I bought a year or so ago in the retail box right there. If you can see it on the video. Uh, Kevin, thanks. He sent over to Mike. I'll, I, I owe you some things. I need to. There you go bring the coins over to you. Like, I got to bring these micro bits. I got to smoke Santa a cigar Carl's with you. going to come to my house and bring all the goodies. Santa is arriving there. So Kevin, thanks over. for sending those over. I tell you what, Mike, I got, I'm getting the itch on this robot lawnmower again. And enough, enough guys and gals have said, no, it's no gals. It's just guys. Enough guys just trying to be inclusive um, have said to me, like, <laughs> 
hey, you going to do that thing? So the, during the time off, I started looking into, I was like, okay, what's it going to take for me? Because really the drivetrain is the hardest thing to do on this car to get it going. And I need a pretty good, again, I got this 20 inch black and Decker electric mower. It'd be perfect for it. And, and what I thought I would do is get a, get a wheelchair that had the joystick controller on it. Cause I need to, I need those wheels to move, right? That's what I need. I need the big wheels to move. The front would be on a swivel so they can go anywhere and the back wheels will drive it. And then I'd have to wire that. I have to take it apart. So yeah, you need those main wheels to move. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So I found a wheelchair not too far from here, hundred bucks that would do it. Yeah. So I haven't pulled the trigger on it. It was a Facebook. It was, I, I figured I'd find it again if yeah. I needed it, but that's, I was kind of thinking like, okay, maybe I was at first I was looking, they were six, seven, eight, nine hundred bucks for these power control units. But if I can find like a wheelchair where the chair itself is kind of destroyed, but the actual right. components are still working. That might be the perfect place. And then, of course, I'm going to have to pull that thing apart and figure out how to kind of modify it, right? That's the, can that be done? Is it possible? There's a little bit of work to do, you know? So I guess some, so I'm kind of. This would be cool though. This is going to be like your version of a guy who has like a Mustang in his garage that he just always goes out to and tinkers with and plays with. And, you know, in a year's time, you know, you could have this thing up and running. I know. Yeah. Well, the weird thing is, is I can actually see the components. Like I can see how to make it work based on what I was looking at from a parts perspective. Okay. The question of, it's like, can I actually put those parts together and make them work? That would be the right. key. Like, do I have the right tools I'm going to have to do? Most of the p- components are plastic, so I can use some Gorilla Glue and some Super Glue to kind of make some of those parts work. I may have to kind of build some components or bolt them on or some of those kinds of things. I don't have a lot of things to fabricate metal parts here. So that kind of becomes an issue and I don't have a lot of things to do that with. So that gets a little, that's been a little hesitant because if I need to create, you know, um, holders or reinforce things, don't have a lot of that here. Right. You know, so that 3D printer comes in handy. (laughs) Yeah, well, and and for the drivetrain, I think I would need to probably metal reinforce that since yeah, it's you You're right. today it's it's meant to be pushed, and so all that. Although if I could, if I could do that, you know, there's significant reinforcement around where the handle goes into the bed, and if I could maximize that in some way, and then basically cut that to set then the the deck on top of those wheels. Okay, once I've got that and the front wheels replaced so they swivel, like we're off to the races. Yeah, you're getting pretty close yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah, we're off to the races at that point. So um, I just didn't realize I could probably get one of those for a hundred bucks. That I wouldn't have thought that either. That, that's a it's a good deal. Yeah. It gives you a lot of what you need for a for hundred bucks. Yeah. And I'm going to pay a bunch for some other things so to replace the batteries. I got some. You, you know, could have just be- bought the Husqvarna, but you know. <laughs> What's the fun in that? Where's the challenge? The Husqvarna is is a wimp. Yeah. Like it's. Uh, and the yards I've seen with it, if you have any incline at all or any, I, I call them moguls, you know, any, any kind of mounds in your yard, man, it just does a terrible job. Mm-hmm. And what I've seen too is, you know, it's probably something that if they have the option for expert installation on the wiring, you know, the mm-hmm. perimeter. I'd probably take them up on it because, man, most of the yards I've seen are just, they have like tall grass right around the outside. At that point, what do you even do? Like if you have to get out there anyway and go mow this tiny little patch, uh, not worth the price you're going to pay for the mower. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I'm thinking about it again. This is one of those things where it's kind of like, well, okay. It'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. You'd have a blast with it once you got in it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, here's what's the, I'm going to buy $3,000 worth of tools <laughs> to build this. Hey, but tools are great to have, right? That's, that's never a bad purchase. Mm. Hannah and I have always agreed on that. Like if you need a tool for a job that you're doing, just go out and get it. Cause you're going to use that tool in the future. I know I need to clean up my garage is what I need to do. Cause like, I can't, I'm to the point I can't find some things now and yeah, I kind of need a better tool solution too. That's, that's one of those things in the garage. Yeah, pegboard, where, right? I don't have a pegboard. I have shelves. Yeah. Yeah, I have I have shelves, and so it's a little messy. I need I need to just purge in general. So I probably just need a weekend 
I got some crap that just needs to go and I need to get down to the bare minimum and then start building on this thing. You kinda. have a garage sale that'll raise that's the, that's your seed funding, right? At your first mm -hmm. round. That makes seven dollars. <laughs> you spend all day Saturday trying to sell garbage and make seven dollars. Hey. I'd rather just throw it away to be <laughs> to be totally to be totally and completely honest with you. So well, we'll see. Uh keep you guys posted. Um, it got me thinking again, I'm coming back around in the fall, and this is kind of when we birthed this plan with some of my high schoolers, uh, kind of based on I wanted a project to work on as well, and uh, and I got some things to do. So, and with as boring as tech has gotten, as we've said in 407, as boring as tech has gotten, yeah, maybe this is something that will jumpstart um, the process and we'll be better with it. Mike, Prime Day is coming up two days, July 15th and 16th uh, here in the United States. Have you, is that, is that just a U.S. thing or is that prime, is that prime for everywhere Amazon? I think is? it's everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So start July 15th. Have you gone out and looked at any of the deals that, uh, you eyeing anything out there yet? Oh, I tr I've been trying to stay away, Jim. I've been trying to stay away from, uh, from looking at the prime deals. There's always something that'll get me on the day that I didn't think I need. I am looking for a new battery pack. So, you know, one of those anchor branded or whatever anchor is my favorite brand. USB battery pack. I seem to always need two and I, I've always only had one. So a, a big one that has a lot of power to it. Somebody can take camping. Um, I've been really into getting stuff for my vehicle for um, you could call it prepper ish sort of stuff. So like a first aid kit, right? Like a trauma kit almost. Um, and having that. So I, I got one for my Jeep and I have it strapped right to the front seat. Um, you know, cause I always used to put them in the back and I'm like, okay, if I get in a wreck or something and I'm pinned in here, or if I, if I need to get it right there, you know, my leg, I need a tourniquet. So my trauma kit has a tourniquet in it, all that stuff. Um, so, you know, some things like that, that are kind of these rare kind of one-offs. So if they show up on prime day, I'll probably end up grabbing another one. Uh, there's been some items like that. It's, it's odd text based though. I, I haven't had a need for anything lately. Everything's running pretty well. I would love to. Uh, start specking out another machine. So I've been thinking about building out another one, especially because, you know, we've talked about this. All the machines I have are built off super old hardware. Like I do not have anything modern except for um, like our laptop is a three-year-old MacBook Pro, you know, very, really good machine, right? My iMac uh, that I'm using to podcast like this, that's a 2000... 13, I think iMac still runs great, but I, I kind of want you know, a new motherboard, something with an M.2 slot. I haven't even played with a motherboard gym that has an M.2 slot for that kind of SSD. Uh, so, you know, playing around with stuff like that. So if those parts start to show up cheap on Prime Day, I'm thinking if I just do a slow buy them as I need them over the next few months, instead of doing it all at once, could be a good way to do it. So, yeah. so those are sort of things I'm looking for. Yeah. No, it's good. If you've been listening to Dave McCabe over at Reset, uh, Reset.fm, you can, he's been doing a build, a little gamer build, and he kind of highlighted it the show before. And then in his most late, recent show, he talked a little bit about what he built. And I think we're on the cusp of some really cool hardware that's out there, especially around motherboards. Yeah. And, uh, and man, I think you can just get some lightning fast stuff at this point. Oh, you can, especially now with the new Ryzen car or, uh, chips that just came out. I would love to do a Ryzen build. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't been in the discord in the last day, but I think there's actually some talk in there. Some guys doing some Ryzen builds. Uh, actually, I think it was Ryan maybe who was doing a Ryzen build. Um, so really excited to get in there and, and start, start playing around is that in the gaming do you guys talking about that in the gaming section on discord no, or hardware yeah, honestly i was getting some notifications and i haven't had time today to jump in there and see what they're what section they're putting that in um and maybe that wasn't even it maybe i was saying something yeah. else. but uh in, yeah, in right. the hardware in the hardware section i think yep. that's where some of them ryan was is mentioning that in there he's got i'm seeing some pictures of the ryzen in there so um if you want to pop in the discord group if you're interested in jumping in on that i too have been I have been tempted, Mike. It's just like, ooh, maybe if this is the time. And if not now, maybe towards the end of the summer, maybe a good time. Summer here in the United States. Yeah. So August. Well, right now, those new Ryzen chips are pretty much, you know, they're hard to come by now. Uh, I think you get a 3700 series, but uh, anything higher than that, I think it's tough to find. Everyone was super excited because this is the first time that, you know, AMD has been ahead of Intel for consumer chips. Um, so it's just, we're in a weird space right now. It'd be a lot of fun to, to yeah. do one of those builds. Put, put some of those, 
put some of those I together. Doubt we're going to see any of that stuff on Prime Day, though. Just to be honest, probably not. Now, if you're going to, if you're thinking about doing that, drop in our hardware group on the Discord channel, and uh, let us know what you're building. I'd love to, uh, love to kind of hear that. I'd love to kind of build a kind of a higher. You know, I've got a Core i7 now, but it's a pretty old i7. Still does this like i it'll do this for the next four years yeah. as long as it keeps running right with well, the odd thing in there is i have a i have two one terabyte ssds one is the which is really stupid by the way one as the uh, maybe that's not true hold on let me look uh, the maybe the os drive is not a full terabyte i think because i always you know i kind of have a main box that has everything the best of everything in it and that's kind of generally what I podcast with and then everything else is kind of hand me down um, kind of as they go. So no, I'm not as dumb as I thought I was. So I have a must be a 250 gig SSD uh, OS drive, which is great. It's about 100, I have about 100 gig free on it. So it's fine. And then um, I bought a one terabyte SSD that I'd been using for burst writing, you know, I'd, I burst plotting oh, right. basically. Um, to kind of use as a buffer and for those SMR drives. And it was kind of not you doing anything. So I put it in and have been writing um, sight hound video content to it um, just because it was there, basically. Oh, yeah. um, I probably need to put a spinner in, really. Just to yeah, I probably would because that's heavy, heavy yeah. writes, yeah. right? You're writing constantly. Well, and really not getting any benefit from an SSD in that standpoint. No. No, yep. no, no, no benefit. Um, I just didn't have a, I just didn't have a drive. Really I didn't now. have a, yeah. What I need to do is buy it. Four terabytes sitting on that shelf right below. But, you know. <laughs> Multiple four terabyte drives. Right. Dude, they're mining. So yeah. get off my back. Um, they need money. <laughs> I do. I do. What I do, what I need to do is pick up another two terabyte drive for the Drobo. That needs a little more space. Then take, there's a 350 spinner in there. Just take that and throw it in the box. That'd make a great camera. Right, make a great camera yeah. spinner okay. drive. You don't yeah. need much for that. No, I have like an old school WD Blue one terabyte drive that I've been using in Sighthound. Um, and you know, sight when you're using camera footage, for the most part, you're not too upset if it crashes. Because what were the odds that you had a you had a robbery? You needed the footage, and that's exactly the moment the hard drive decides to put that would happen to me. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> if I, but you know, but you, so if it if it were to go out, you'd be like, oh. Okay. I lost the last 30 days of footage. There wasn't yeah. anyway. No, and I got some old, I have an old 350 gig uh, drive sitting in this Drobo. It was just sitting around. I just threw it in the Drobo because I was out of drives. Uh, that can definitely uh, fulfill that. Kind of I just grabbed a new drive for the, for my Unraid box, a four terabyte. I was surprised a Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drive uh, for $95 on Amazon. Not that bad for four terabytes. No. So, uh, those prices are definitely coming down. I know that if you go WD red on those, you're looking above a hundred, maybe one Oh nine to one, probably 39. If you get the 7,200 RPM version. So, and you know, I've heard great things about those iron wolf drives. So the iron wolf NAS four terabyte drive, uh, was sub a hundred on Amazon. Yeah. Well, and I'll be honest, I've been getting, I've been picking up these little two terabyte refurbs right they, they come out of seagate barracuda refurbs 30 bucks oh that's not bad so at all. no right. mm, no and you know it it is um you know and they've worked i i've been buying these for burst i was buying the four terabyte versions for burst because it was in the sweet spot for a while yep three and four terabytes were in the sweet spot and i'll be honest three might even be a little bit cheaper if you're looking at price per meg uh but 30 bucks hard to beat that many of these have free shipping associated with them so you're talking about two terabytes for 30 bucks hard to, like you can't even get a 64 terabyte flash drive you know well i guess you can but well if, um, yeah so if your drive base slots aren't an issue because that's what i had i was kind of i had gotten that routine with my unraid box because i had you know 15 bays to fill up um, but actually then I started running into, okay, so I have, I have actually 10 SATA ports on that motherboard, four of those being from one of those, uh, uh, the, the PCI cards, right. these in non-read. Um, so 
I have 10. So I had gotten used to kind of just, oh, adding a drive, adding a drive. I never thought I would actually get to 10. <laughs> uh, just because, you know, I didn't have that much storage needs back right, then. Right. So I was using smaller drives. And now I'm like, man, eh, if I had been smart, I could have saved some space. True. Now I've used all 10. And I either need to add another PCI card, um, or an LGA card, or I need to start replacing smaller drives with larger drives. And that's a pain to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably sell. You're you're good at this though. You could probably unload those smaller drives and pick up some pretty Oh, I totally could. If I wanted to go through the process of pulling out the drive, putting in the new one, letting it copy and recreate all the data, it's yeah, it's a pain to do it that way. Uh, I'll probably because I do have uh so it's a 15 bay unit. So I'd probably grab one more PCI card that would give me four more SATA ports and probably just go from there. <laughs> just add four more drives because I have enough bays in that chassis to add the drives yeah it's a tough problem to have isn't it it, yeah. <laughs> it's, it is pretty ridiculous when i'm looking for you know 250 gig not even that maybe 100 gig work for the for the, the 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 pictures that are coming off my camera in the garage and uh, you know and i'm using a one terabyte ssd because all my other drives are consumed with burst mining at this point you have that problem um yeah that's a pretty lame problem i won't lie the the drobo it's at this point the drobo has been loaded with oh about 2.15 terabytes of drives right that consists of and this is really the drobo has kind of gotten everything that's left over so i have a 700 an old 750 gig drive in there i have a two terabyte that i bought just to kind of get some some storage in there a one terabyte green a 500 gig seagate drive like who oh, wow. who has any of that left oh, and then I, say. I have a 320 gig drive that's I, that's still working yeah, yeah still working and it, it's it i threw that in there and it did okay it got it got it a little bit more space i'm at least at this point i so it has two and a half terabyte no 2.15 terabytes total about 1.67 again i've got a my hp homes or my hp server micro server is backing up the moro data box so i've been working on getting that all done and then i have an uh, i have a sync that goes between the hp server and the drobo to get that backed up so those those are always it's kind of three you know it's got the three two one stuff right that's going on so the drobo has got about 490 gig left so i don't know if i'm in danger of running out of space i don't know if i really need to spend 30 bucks on a two terabyte drive but mike 30 bucks for two terabytes sometimes it's just crazy. crazy right yeah yeah no it's just crazy it's, it's crazy, crazy time place all those drives with one 30 dollar drive yeah right yeah. did you say it's up to you know one point something total space yeah yeah, it's one uh, one point six seven yeah. on that so three dollar drive. You have yeah. more space than all those drives. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And if I got another two terabyte, it would really blow out on the Drobo. It would really blow out the space. I would, I would be good for a while at yeah. that point. And the plan had been to just to be honest, the plan had been when burst when we stopped doing burst. And I thought I was going to stop doing burst a long time ago. All those drives over and use them for storage, right? Yeah, they would all go in the Drobo. I, I have a bunch of four terabyte drives and they I would have put, um, I think I have five and I would have put five, four terabytes in there. And that would have been a pretty nice Drobo box. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done that yet because they're still, <laughs> they're still, they're still, uh, they are still burst mining. Yeah. 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 Well, it's just kind of, speaks a little bit to kind of the ridiculousness of where uh, hard drive prices have gone uh, on prime day a couple things that are going on right now spend 10 bucks at whole foods of course you know amazon bought whole foods you can get a, a 10 dollars amazon credit which is pretty great if you haven't tried that they're really trying to get people to buy the whole food stuff they're also trying to entice you to buy to do your shopping there so 25 dollars off gatorade pepsi doritos and more how can you not get more Gatorade, Pepsi, and Doritos. Like that's can't run out of those kinds of things, right? This is the bread and butter. That's what you love. Uh, from a from a tech side, right now, Amazon Echo Dots, uh, 25 bucks. Ooh, sorry, my my Echo now is listening to me. So make sure she's not talking. She's still listening. Or right, at least somebody else is listening to the podcast. <laughs> and then um Apple AirPods, $144.99. Which, Mike, I thought those AirPods were a little more expensive. Yeah, 169 is that, is that what they are? I yeah. thought they were more in the 200 range. Depends, but... uh, oh, no, no, no. Not that okay. much. Okay. Um, I think it depends on if you get the charging, the wireless charging case now or not. Okay. 
Well, it says the, the Apple AirPods are the best earbuds for those invested in the Apple ecosystem. Macy's had them for 129 earlier in the week. So oh, really? this, by the way, it's off Tom's hardware or Tom's, Tom's guide.com. Uh, Macy's had them for 129 earlier in the week. So I think they'll get cheaper on prime day. However, they may be hard to find in stock at a lower price. So I had split the baby there because they're actually, they're not ones that they're 159 with the regular. So this is brand new from apple.com. Right. 159 with just the regular charging case, 199 with the wireless charging case. Okay. I do right. not know how a wireless charging case is worth an extra $40 on headphones. <laughs> I just don't understand how. No, right on. If you're all wireless at this point, yeah. and you have a big pad or something like that, maybe. But uh, I was I was using wireless charging for a while and I kind of gave up on it, to be honest. I have, you know, I have the anchor stands where you stand it up and you set it in there and it's charging. But depending on what case you use and then if you go to pick it up to use it, it stops charging. I'm like, just give me back my cord. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm 100% cord. I've yeah. never gone. I've never gone wireless. Uh, charging. So you might, if you've been wait, if you've been holding off for for AirPods, you might want to. Uh, this may be the time to pick them up. You might see them as, still, as well. uh, probably my favorite set of. I mean, there's a bunch now that do the same functionality. Uh, but if you are an iPhone user, especially if you are in the Apple ecosystem, um, they're they're just so darn convenient. They work really well. Oh, totally. Totally. The Amazon Fire TV sticks are going to be available for 40 bucks. Typically, that's that's $30 off. I um, still, though, word of caution to everyone, okay. I cannot recommend those because of the limitation of them in Google. If you use YouTube or a spe there's a workaround for YouTube, but or if you want to watch YouTube TV, don't get a Fire Stick. It doesn't work. Um, the, Google and Amazon still are feuding over that. And uh you know, I think YouTube's just so basic, right? And you shouldn't have to have a workaround to watch YouTube uh, on your device. I mentioned earlier, I didn't know which countries this would be available in. So last year, Prime Day was celebrated in 17 countries. This year, 18, including the US, UK, Spain, Singapore, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Japan, Italy, India, Germany, France, China. China, wow. Canada, Belgium, Austria, and Australia. In Australia, they have... I didn't think they had Amazon in Australia. I don't. I don't know. Hmm. In 2019, Prime Day will expand to the United Arab Emirates for a total of 18 countries. So those are those countries that are available for you. If you're listening in one of those countries, um, you might want to uh, just watch for those. Mike, I'm kind of with you. I don't. <laughs> there's just not a lot of things I kind of need. It's been an expensive time for my family with my daughter in college and kids doing things and you know just we've been bought i've been doing redoing some landscaping before we sell this place and so i've been kind of holding off on the tech and the tech is just and i didn't i think we alluded to this in 407 when i was kind of saying get off my lawn but i think the tech is just lasting longer like it yeah. just yeah. doesn't break like it used to right don't you think i 100 percent you know, it's the same reason that I'm kind of ready to do a new build because number one, I haven't done one in a while. Yeah. And that's because I, you know, all this hardware, like we've talked about, I mean, my Unraid box, you guys have heard me talk about a million times is built off a motherboard from who knows how long ago. I mean, probably from back when I graduated high school. If but it not, still works, right? It works great. I have no reason to replace it. Honestly, the the, the functionality, the performance is, is just fine. So, you know, the same. But speaking of deals, and new tech. I did get one new piece of tech over the last two weeks. That was kind of cool. I don't know, Jim, you're a YouTube TV subscriber. So I don't know if you got the same email. It was. Right it ended July 2nd. Oh, it ended. Okay. Yeah, well, if it. you were a YouTube TV subscriber and if you were the head of the household, right? So if you're using someone else's and your account's added to their family, you might not have got it. But if you are the main person on the family account, uh, they sent an email for their Google Nest hubs. And they were going to give it to you for $49. And these things are usually $129. They were on sale for $70, I think, uh, in just their Google store. And then if you were a YouTube TV person, you get them for $49 or $45, or something really cheap, maybe even $40. It was like $40 or between $40 and $50. Um, I didn't have a need for one of these. Obviously, you guys know that I'm an Alexa house. Sorry, I'm just activating and I just activated my own. Uh, we're an Amazon house. We use them. But I was like, you can't turn down that good of a deal, right? Especially to try it out. Now, the the Google Nest Hub is the one with the, it's a, 
it's smaller, but it still has the screen on it. So you've got a screen. Um, and so, you know, if you need to watch YouTube videos, if so putting it in the kitchen's a perfect place. And so I've really been having fun testing out the Google capabilities. So comparing Google assistant to, uh, a lady or Amazon and, and really seeing which one's better, man, Jim, I, I don't know if you have used a Google product or a Google assistant lately. They are just, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, right? I've heard you, that. You are yeah. not concerned about privacy because that's been the one reason I've been wanting to unplug it. It's because this is just now I, now I do have, cause we, before yeah. we had no Google product in the house cause we don't use Android phones. Um, obviously we use Google Chrome, but, uh, besides that we had no, you know, device that could be listening to us from Google and now we do, but man, the thing is so cool. So Jim, you got me into using Google photos, right? Cause it just backs up. It's, it's almost like a backup for our iPhone. Uh, so it, while it's just sitting there, it's scrolling through my Google photos and I, when I selected an album, we did a smart album and I just clicked me, Hannah, Harrison, Emmett, and it just pulls any photo that I have in there that has us in there. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's super cool. Uh, so Emmett gets up on the counter and he just now watches the photos and he, he knows that if he goes like this, it'll change the photo to something he's never, and he just sits there and he'll just swipe. Oh, it's my daddy. I'm like, yeah, it's me. Look at that. And so, like so it's been, it's actually a really cool device. I, my favorite thing has been saying like, you know, Google, how do I hard boil an egg? And she pops up a YouTube video and it just shows me right there, like no extra work needed. Um, so, so, so first of all, it's my first assistant with a screen. I do not have any of the Amazon devices that have a screen. I probably, now I kind of want to try one to be honest, to see how they work. So it's my first assistant with a screen. We have a bunch of assistants around the house. I probably have, uh, six echo devices around the house. None of them though have the screen. Many of actually all of them are the dots except for the one main echo that's in our kitchen. And so it's been, it's been kind of nice to test out the two and to really compare Google versus Alexa. And like I said, if you're not worried about, um, security <laughs> for any reason, uh, it's just, it genders, it's not even a competition anymore. Like yeah, the, the heard. assistant is just hands down, uh, better in almost all ways. Now I will say when it comes to smart home, Amazon has made that a million times easier than any other service just to get some lights set up and some main things on the, on the Google. It, it was complicated. It was convoluted. There was no easy way to do it. Um, you couldn't just have her discover smart devices around your house. It was, it was hard. So Amazon has done a great job with connected home and smart home, but when it comes to actual assistant tasks, that's where Google really shines. I'm going to have to pick up. I think maybe I'll keep my eyes open and there's deals all the time for $30 yeah. or $25 or Google, you know, the Google devices to get one on the desk here. I mean, I'm, I bought this other device that I have down. I won't say the name cause it'll come on. Yeah. Um, and been great having it, it down here you know she turns my studio lights on and we have the intercom system going yep. and right i mean it's i get notifications when boxes are here that's really key on saturdays because we get our hello fresh how do you get the announcement for that uh so whenever well it just the, the yellow light goes around whenever and when whenever well i guess no maybe we don't for hello fresh because that's not but for anything. I, I don't. I don't know if I've set oh, up that's that feature. Not, that's uh, Amazon packages, maybe. Maybe it just is for Amazon packages. I don't have thinking that's about. That's kind of cool. That's one thing I didn't know you could yeah. do. No, I bet there is. I bet there is a way to set that up, though. For, yeah, for I would. Services. Yeah, try one. Um, you know, the screen was kind of a game changer. Now I'm really wondering if I had one of the Amazon devices with the screen, if that would make as much of a difference to me. Uh, it was just. It was kind of cool having that extra form of input or v actually. Oh, I see what output. you're saying. Get one with a screen. Like I need one more screen down here. Well, true. <laughs> That's true. No, down there, I do. Sense. In a kitchen, it is awesome. It yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'd kind of like to get in the kitchen, both a, a Google and an Amazon device in there with screens on both of them. I don't think, Mike, it's, I don't think it's an overkill to have both, to be honest, because there are some, that do better better things than others, and I'd like to get the tube, with the with the speaker moved into the into our bedroom, so that I can play music there. And I could again, I could buy one of the smaller ones and plug some speakers into it. But I don't want it's a bedroom. I don't want to plug speakers in. I just wanted to play freaking music. Yeah. Right. 
So that's really that's really what I should concentrate on. L- listen to me. I'm saying there's no such thing, no new tech, and now I'm like, oh, buy all this stuff. Um, I should, yeah, I should, I should be looking for one of those for both of those devices. Um, I was kind of hoping, and actually, some of this you can just do off the PC as well. And so there may be some, the Google Assistant. I've been messing around with some other hardware on that, but I have to give it a try. Um, Joe says, uh, let's see, Joe had said earlier, Mike, supposedly the YouTube app is coming back. Yeah. And I was wondering, so I asked him, I think he tried to send a link to, and I don't think the link came through in our chat, but uh, I asked him if it was the YouTube one or sorry, YouTube TV, as well as just YouTube. Um, so, you know, if it's coming back, I've got four of those things in a drawer. (laughs) So could it really help me out if it does? Yeah. Well, while you were talking, a two terabyte drive is on the way. <laughs> Took a lot of convincing, man. You were you're on the fence. Hey, it was 30 bucks. It's true. It's 30 bucks. It's on sale. It's they're typically the price point for th- for two terabytes right now is that 35 to 40 kind of on eBay. If you're in that space, that's kind of where the two, three terabytes are. Yep. 40 to 45. The four terabytes are, you know, 40 to 50, somewhere in there. And so that's refurbished, you said, right? It's a refurb. Yeah. Yeah. For 30 bucks. Like as long as the thing freaking works. Oh yeah. I bought from this vendor before and they, they do returns pretty easily. So, um, I've had one, I've had one come and it was bad. So yeah, two terabytes, swap that out, get that 350 moved over to the box, turn that into the camera repository. And I did start looking for more Wi-Fi cameras that I could use with Sighthound. Like I'm kind of getting to that point where like I kind of like to bring it all into one control panel. Right. I've got some Zmodo stuff. I've got Sighthound. You know, I've got the D-Link stuff. Um, and I'm not ready to go ring or any of those things just yet. So I've been kind of, I looked at some refurb. Those, remember those D-Links that we bought? The D-Links? Mm, they're, oh, yeah. let's see. They work just fine. Yeah, let's see what the number on those things were. There's a, there's a model 936, I want to say. The DCS 936, those are like 27 or 30 bucks right now. You can get, you know, they're they're not really production anymore, but man, that has been a solid member. That's the one that's kind of on a hinge. Yeah. And so it's, you can mount it. I had mine outdoors, Jim, since we bought it. <laughs> Out, it's, I mean, it's not getting wet, right? It's under yeah. my back patio, right. but it's been exposed to the extreme cold we've had here and, and the heat. And it's done just fine. I'm trying to look up the brand. I'm having a forgetting the brand i just bought i know they have wireless ones and it's been great with sidehound uh it'll show up here eventually yeah well i've i've been considering going back and getting because the front door like the one the z moto one we got for the front door has kind of quit i mean it's it works but the notification pieces have kind of stopped working for us and so i haven't had a i haven't haven't any trouble shooting it, that one, that's when it has its own hub. It will not connect to Sidehound. No, correct. Yeah. yeah, no, I can't. I can't get that. So it's in the app and we get notifications. Every once in a while, give us a notification and nothing is there. You know, you're like, oh, hey, a box came. No, it didn't. Um, I kind of yeah. use it as a deterrent. It sits right in the window where everybody can see it and the light is on all the time on it. And so you can see there's a camera in the window. And I think that by itself is enough to maybe deter people if they were going to come steal boxes. You also got to come all the way up a hill to come to my house and get to my front porch and walk up the steps. I mean, it's a little bit of a journey. You're uh, you're going to Frodo this thing if you're going to get up there and get the box. Thing. Dev, I mean, the whole thing with home security is all you need to do is make the your next door neighbor's house be more appealing than yours, right? Like just deterrence. You just can't be the one. It's got to be my, difficult yeah. enough that they choose your neighbor over you. That's all you yeah. got. Uh, Rio Link is who I was thinking of. So Rio Link mm-hmm. has some some good ones. Their wireless ones uh, have good range, but they have good range because their antennas are super ugly. They're kind of the big, tall antennas that stick out, but um, still great cameras. You know, the thing for me though, Jim, has been a lot of times if you're going to run one of these cameras, you got to get power to it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so why not do uh, a PoE cam? You know, if, if I'm going to have to run a wire or get it, if, I, and if, if you want it to look nice, right, if you're going to mount it, um, I could probably figure out a way, you know, then to get a Ethernet cable, easy, run it through and get it down to a, a PoE switch. And they sell those like five port PoE switches from TP-Link for super cheap, like 30 bucks. I have actually one in my attic 
So I just have a five port POE switch up there. Um, that just, you know, that's all of my cameras then are in the eaves. They just run up into the attic and all they have to do is plug into that one switch up there. And there's one cable that runs down from that switch down to my basement server rack. And it works yeah. Well. yeah. No, it's a good way. Good way to get it done. Well, uh, reliable too, right? You're not dealing right. with the, you know, image quality of wireless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one benefit to this Zmoto camera that I have on the front never giving us an alert is the battery lasts forever. Oh, it's like, still going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How often do you have to charge that thing? Once a quarter, maybe okay, every three bad. months. No, no, it's not bad. In fact, the, the current battery, I'm going to bring my phone down here. Oh, yeah, here it is. The current battery has been going for a lot longer because it stopped giving us, you know, it's completely stopped giving us alerts. Right. And so the only time that camera comes on is when we go for a live view of it. And then just the other day, both Sarah and I got a alert like, hey, there's movement at your front door. And we looked at it and there was no, there was nothing there. Like no cat, not smudge. Smudge is our neighbor's cat. He kind of owns the neighborhood. No smudge, no nothing. And we're like, what? what? And it, you know, and then it didn't, it didn't go again. I mean, I haven't gotten an alert in a while. So weird. yeah, it's kind of, it's a good little camera. I probably need to spend some time troubleshooting it. I did buy the. I also bought the Zmoto, um, the one that sits on a base and it rotates uh, almost 300, like 300 around. It's got some motion attacks and I could never get that working solidly either. And I ended up unplugging it and it's sitting on the, it's sitting up on the, the, the dresser up there. And it was like, mm, do I want to, you know, I want these things, the D-Link one, man, I just plug it in. It just freaking works. Yeah. Right. Right. Sighthound has been doing some good upgrades too. They're actually, if you're going to try uh, for free, you can go out and grab their beta. Mm -hmm. So they have actually each at the start of each month since the end of our, since the beginning of May. So May, June, July, we're on our third uh, beta. So each month they release a new version of it. Uh, a lot more in terms of, you know, saving processing power. They now have animal detection. So when you're selecting what you want to see or what you want to get alerts for, it can be, you know, path, like cars, um, people, animals. It's just another thing it's been able to detect yeah. against. But Nose has been doing a pretty good job because uh, I would always get false alerts in my backyard because PD with the dog door, he goes outside in the backyard and he would always trigger and always thought it was a person. But now it's actually really good at saying, nope, that's an animal. Uh, so I only set alerts for humans and then uh, it's a, eliminated a lot of those false positives. So if you're if you haven't checked it out, they are once they come out of beta because they had such a long release for this last version. I mean, this last version was talked about for forever. And the way Sighthound works is, you know, if you want to, you can pay 50 bucks a year to get updates and support. Well, last year there weren't any big updates. So they said, okay, we're going to give you guys all another year. So just wait till it comes out. We'll reset everyone. So if you purchased a, a, a service pack or an update pack last year, anytime in 2018, then uh, you're going to be good for another year. They'll, they'll extend it. They mine is out of uh yeah, out of fine. Mine's expired as well. But don't buy it anymore. Don't re up it uh, because they'll they'll redo it for you once they're out of beta. Okay. So, um, but I, they're they're saying right now my renewal price is just twelve dollars if I buy basic. At this point, fifty dollars for pro. Yep. I mean that, that that's the normal price. Okay. Twelve is for bit. You're right. If you have basic, because basic is just two cameras in HD, I believe. Yeah. Um. Pros unlimited, but you're saying I should hold off regardless. Yes. Hold okay. off regardless. Okay. Yep. Okay. They're going to give everyone as long as you purchased that sometime in 2018 last year. I think I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, they're going to first started talking about these. Yeah. yeah they're going to re up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll hold off. I'm getting that red notification on the the uh, the site. I, that's actually good to know, Mike, because I it says renew. And right. I was like, oh, am I going to do that? I don't yeah. know. Okay. I'll save me 12 bucks. Grab the beta. So go out, grab the, it just installs right over your old one. You oh. might as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So go, go out to Sighthound, log into your account is how you get there. And okay. if you scroll down when you log in, you'll, it'll have your download options and you can download the beta. Okay. Sounds good. Yep. I see. So it says downloads. So I can click on that link and then um, the, there's the beta. Do I need to go? You to go to your account page. So you have to okay. log, did you log in? Yeah. You have I to did. log into your account. Yep. Okay. At the bottom okay. there. Cool. Cool. I have to give that. I have to give that a whirl. Maybe after the show. Yeah. When when we are done. 
it's one of those like odd releases though where the ui doesn't change and you're like oh a big upgrade the next big version i've been waiting for this for a year i was like oh well, it doesn't look like anything changed uh but it, a lot under the hood was done um w- one more update uh to the bit defender box if you've been listening to the show for any length of time you know i bought that i've, I've had the v1 and now i have v2 and Oftentimes, vendors build these things and they make some promises like, oh, we're going to continually update this Google hog, um, <laughs> which they never did, by the way. They never upgraded that thing. They had all they put all this hardware in there. And they never did anything with it. I ended up giving it to my son. It works really well as a wireless router for him. But um, move to the Bitdefender box. Uh, this week, they sent me an email. It's super cool when you see these kinds of things that come out. So I said, uh, we uh, when you said we wanted uh, we wanted the power to customize the Wi-Fi settings of your Bitdefender box. We went immediately to work. And here we are today with software update that not only gives you more control of your Wi-Fi, but also protects your children better. Thanks to the new parental control features that enable safety measures across the entire home network. Here's what you can do now. So you can now split the frequency band. Now you can choose between two wireless frequencies in your Bitdefender box. You can split them under different names or choose and use different passwords. So pretty cool. Uh, select the wireless channel you want to use. Select uh, uh, select less crowded channels and minimize the risk of overlapping signals, interference, and network slowdowns. You can make your router invisible to others. That's nothing new. Didn't exist in it before, so they finally caught up with that one. Enable or disable. This is kind of cool. Enable or disable Wi-Fi and change the password remotely. So you can do that from the app now internally. Get that done if you want to. If you need to make those changes and you're away. You can get that all done through the through the app that's available. And then I think this is kind of cool. You can enforce parental control rules across multiple connected devices. And what sometimes your kids will do, so say they have one device and you've locked that device down, they'll just join it with another device, Yeah. right? They'll just, mm, I get past you. And a device you don't know about can join the network. And if you don't, if you have PFSense and some of those other things, you can send some rules to say, hey, any new devices that are added uh, block immediately. Um, but of course, then every time your friends come over, um, uh, that is getting done. Also, kids have more and more and more devices. Yeah. And so it was initially, it was harder to do that kind of administration on this bit defender box, but they have since fixed that. So if you're, I don't know if anybody else bought this along with me, it has been a good little wireless router. And I'll be honest, my wife plays these games on her Android phone, and they're constantly pinging me saying, hey, we're blocking some phishing attempts from those games. Real or not, I feel safer knowing that box is blocking for me. So some updates going on in the, at Bitdefender. They have been a good, uh, they've been a good, good little box for me. Um, it's been out a while now, no, no V3 that I've heard of coming, at least at this point. But you know, we burned through these. I had a buddy who was having some trouble with his Wi-Fi router. And I said, you know, what do you get? And it was like this $35 Netgear, you know, and it, he runs a whole bunch of traffic through it. I'm like, yeah, those don't last very long. Let me just tell you, they, you get about a year. They're new, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I have become but, such a router snob, Jim. Uh, yeah. When it comes to, well, it's just because once I've seen the power of a beefy, good router mm-hmm. and all the problems it eliminates, like how many times have I had to go down and reset my router? <laughs> Zero in the last few years, just because once you have something that works, like a PF sensor, right now I'm using Untangle. Um, I had the same thing with Untangle, though. I, you know, a few, I don't know what Hannah's been visiting, but she is, her device is getting pinged by a malware site mm-hmm. uh, block it. Mm-hmm. I think some mm-hmm. of her websites she'll go to. It's a uh, game. It's a game. I'm sure it's a game. Probably is something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's super cool. Let me read this in force pronoun controls one more time. So identify unknown devices that connect to your Wi-Fi and pause internet connectivity until you figure out who they belong to, which is kind of cool. You can, you can do that through PFSense, but you can do this all on the app, which is, which is super cool. With this update, these decisions move to the network level. So you can block unwanted content on TV sets, smartphones, tablets, and even freeloading smart fridges, and smart mirrors. I didn't realize. Oh. Do we have smart mirrors out there now? Really? We must. Maybe those we must. IoT the, devices. Using them well. Yeah. Plus, you can now block access to certain domains, such as Facebook.com. <laughs> Yikes. That they mentioned that. that. That's the one that they mentioned across yeah. all devices assigned to your child's account. Read more about it. 
uh, in their in their posts. So adding if you're if you're dealing with kind of internet security for your kids, this may be I don't think up until this release it was really ready for that, but I think they're getting to that point now where you can get some granularity and maybe protect your kids a little bit. Um, and so if you're struggling with that, so it's so worth looking into. Ironically, I don't have any kids at home and I don't care. My daughter's 20. I don't care what she's looking at. So I don't, I'm not as concerned. I am. I tell you what I am concerned about. I'm concerned about all this freaking fishing stuff that's going on. And I don't want, you know, I can't, I tell Sarah not to do these things, but she's going to, apparently she's going to do them anyways. And so uh, it helps block those people, those things and helps, keeps us safe. Here. My biggest thing is the malware. Cause to be honest, you know, I think even once my kids are older, you know, if you don't want them to access that stuff, don't give them the device. Because now there's LTE, they have a buddy come over and he can turn on, you know, yeah. he can share his data with it. Like you're never going to stop your kid from getting to be on what he wants to be on. Your neighbor's Wi-Fi, probably, there's probably one unlocked he can hop on at some point. Like, but it's, it's, so don't give him the device, but really the malware part of this has been the big part that has been huge that I have really liked to see. And you guys would be oddly surprised if you, once you install one of these and then you start getting those alerts for the filters that are filtering out, you know, malware, phishing sites, intrusion prevention system that's picking up on things. You're like, oh man, there's a lot more going on than I even thought. Kevin Schoonover in chat room says, uh, worst slash most malware he's run into is child from ages four to 12 website-based games linking to other web-based games. Mm, okay. You know? Um. Yeah, and there's just some stuff. Did you hear about Zoom and on the Mac, the Zoom client? So Zoom has gotten real popular, right? The yeah. video conference. Yes. Software. And um, and so the Mac client basically creates a web, kind of a web server, web socket, whatever, for itself when it installs. And it's kind of always on. And if you click a link, a malformed link that will invoke the Zoom service, it you can just go to a website. It will invoke the camera and turn and turn it on oh really yeah. yeah yeah so at first i was like oh wait till i tell my windows friends and then i was i caught this off of the word fence um podcast and i was like oh i can't wait to talk about oh it's mac there's the an hard assignment. part about that is i mean <laughs> unless that website has been flagged invoking your yeah. the stuff that's that's a perfectly normal uh you know, item for a, for a web browser to do, right? Now your camera, when your camera turns on, the lights turn on, right? So, and they can hide it behind I mean, another screen. Now they probably wouldn't block something like that because yeah. activating Zoom is a normal task you probably want it to uh, to do mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of the time, right? Yeah. It's the security expert I was listening to on the podcast was saying, so of course they got notification of this and they all went and joined and he was like, so there were like, he clicked this link and because the, the, it was a zero day, the, the, the researcher had notified Zoom of this 90 days ago and they did nothing. They did some things to try and stop it. And of course, so he put it out, kind of said, hey, and here's the use case and here's the test case. And so the guy said he went, he clicked on the link on the test case link and there were like 40 researchers in this chat room, like testing, they were all testing this link. And so they were talking to each other and some were dropping in and out, but he goes, it was just, it was super funny to have this massive conference, video conference of this exploit on Zoom with all these researchers who were in there. Wow. It was, it was, um, it was pretty funny. So if you're on the Mac, um, what you can do is you can delete Zoom completely, but then make sure you wipe out all the files on it because just deleting it does not res does not remove the web server or whatever that component is. I forget what exactly what it's called. That will still be there. So you got to go in and delete the Zoom file to get rid of that. And then I would reboot probably after that to make sure if it's gone. It sounds like I think now that it's a zero day and it's in the wild, a Zoom will probably get a little more serious about getting this fixed. Yeah. Um, but that's a little scary, although not terrible. I mean, yeah, okay, your camera's going to turn on. You know, I don't know, Mike, do you block your camera when you're not using it? Do you I have do something not. on there? No. Yeah, I, don't, I don't either. And I, I used to on my laptop sometimes, but no. The new C92X models, the newest one, has an actual built-in um, oh, shutter. shutter for it. And these don't. And I did it for a while. And then I would call people and it was like, why isn't my camera working? Oh, that's right. I put a, I put something on there. You know, so I don't know. Do, how do you feel? Do you, you, obviously, since you don't have something on there, you're not concerned? No. 
and especially with the lights, right? Like, I they could probably could deactivate the light on there, but uh, you know, yeah. if some guy wants to see me sitting here in my skivvies sometime, right? Like when I come down early in the morning with my cup of coffee, like more power to him. Yeah, right? there's not a lot to see, kind of. Yeah. I'm typing. Yeah, that's usually typing. Me. Typing. Typing. This is looking me. at the crypto. Yeah, just watching YouTube. So, I mean, it's yeah. Watching YouTube, watching Connor Ward mow his lawn. That would be super <laughs> exciting. <laughs> really into cigars and mowing. Yeah, it, it's what a weird exactly. And this couple in Idaho that are building a timber frame house. You know, it's uh, so I okay. But uh, all right, in all seriousness, if someone gets control of your camera and your microphone, that's a serious problem, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're not. I'm not saying you shouldn't worry about that, but. It is one of those kinds of things. I live a pretty boring life, so it's um, Kevin. Thanks for that uh, for that note as well, Mike. Um, it, it seems like every show you have an update on your Unraid box. You've got something new you want to share with that? Yeah. Well, I mean, just one. You know, the the latest and greatest from me on Unraid is really messing around with Grafana, and I know a lot of you, especially if you're in the IT space probably do play around with Grafana quite a bit. But for someone who's not in IT on a day-to-day basis, I hadn't really messed around too much, honestly, with Grafana. And so uh, if you guys don't know what Grafana is, it's a it's a way to make dashboards. And it plugs into a lot of data inputs. So depending on where you store the data that you want it to display in, uh, in interactive dashboards, you can pull from a lot of different places. So if you are... I won't speak to using Grafana outside of this because I don't know. I haven't played with it too much. But if you're on Unraid, there are some really good dockers. Uh, like Varkin is one for Plex. And Telegraph is one just for generally for your Unraid machine. Uh, those two dockers will feed current statistics into an influx a database. So you also get the influx DB Docker as your database. And then Grafana um, can pull that data from the database and really display it in a really cool way. Um, let's see if I can show you real quick here just what I've been playing with in general. Um, share the screen, right? Open it up here. And so these are all based off of, there's a really cool community of people who are building Grafana dashboards. So you can actually go and use their template. Are and you then, sharing? Uh, not yet. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. And then you can connect, I was pulling up the screen, and then you can connect it to, uh, any, to your database. So there we go. Okay. We can see it. Perfect. So, so this is you know a custom dashboard that uh, I picked up. There's a guy actually on Reddit who put it together. Um, but this is essentially you know what you're playing with. So all of this data is pulled from a database, and there's one Docker that takes the data and feeds it in. So this is updating every 30 seconds. But you can, I mean, you can drag and drop these dashboards in. You can change the appearance um, on a lot of these sort of stats, like for drive temperature. Right uh, in the standard one, there was just the current drive temperature, but you can add in the average and the max. Those were two columns I like to see. I want to, on average, you know, what's this drive reporting? Uh, what's the max it's ever hit? And changing the time frame. Um, so really, and the great part about this is uh, I have this behind my Let's Encrypt reverse proxy, meaning I can get to this from outside of my network. And so I can I can be at work and I can pull up this page and really check in on the stats of the Unraid box. You guys will see down here, you know, Docker CPU, which Dockers are using the most CPU at the time, Docker RAM, everything that you really need to do, um, everything that you need to view all in, in one dashboard. So something fun I've been playing with. Um, oh, I just showed one, someone who's watching my Plex or I showed their email address. So, all right, you guys don't spam them too bad. Um, but because uh, up top here, actually right above here, I have... Plex stats. So who's currently watching? Um, where are they watching from? Things like that. It's right above here. Uh, but there's someone watching, so it'll show all their info. It'll show where they're watching, even in their IP address. So <laughs> so I'll leave that. Well, but uh, well, yeah, someone yeah. I'm playing with, and I just really like, it's like I said, something that if you're not in IT on a day-to-day -day basis, you probably haven't played with it, but a super powerful tool, and it's free. So might as well get in there and play around with it. Super cool. little update on the Unraid box. And uh, Mike, thanks for doing that. Next week, um, 
Mark Robson's coming on. We're going to talk a little barbecue and a little grilling. We've got we're going to focus a little bit more on food and a little less on the on the grill technology. Not we haven't really I've done this show like for the last two years because I'm out next week as well. Oh um, no, yeah, really? Oh. For the for the uh, grill tech. Uh, okay, well it'll be Mark and I. Mike Howard. It was scheduled to be on. Mike is not doing well. Um, he oh, he. No. He found out uh, just before his trip to Alaska that uh, he's got some spots on his liver and some other things. He was experiencing some side pain, not giving any way HIPAA, any HIPAA violations. This is all on his all on his Facebook page. Uh, I don't have a lot of details right now. Uh, I haven't heard from the family. I, I pinged him right before he went on. He had a trip to Alaska scheduled and uh, was not about to miss that. So they they went and did a biopsy and then he went on vacation, which is super great. They weren't going to have the results back for uh, like four or five days anyways. And I haven't seen, I just was checking his Facebook page and I haven't seen any updates, but um, you know, Mike uh, made it through. He had, uh, he had some, uh, he had a cancer spot on his head that he had removed two, three years ago. And uh, the doctor at the time and did not have a very positive prognosis. And of course he's had been doing very, very well. And so our thoughts and prayers go out to the Howard family yeah. for that. He won't be joining us next week. So it'll be Mark and I, but Mike has been a big part of what we've done here at the average guy TV and the network and all the things we do. Mike has been around since the very beginning. Uh, and you know, we've kind of gone through one of these scares with him a little bit and you know, he, he wore a headband for a while. I think if you go back to some of the old, home gadget geeks. I had him on kind of not far, not long after he had had that removed on the, the back of his head. And I think he still had a headband on. I, that was pretty, probably pretty bad of me to have him on that early, but that's, the, that's what gonna, he wanted to do, right? He wanted yeah. to get out there and just not think about it. In podcast. No, kind of the community we are. And, uh, and so Mike, we're thinking about you. You're I'm sure he's not at this point. I'm sure he's not listening not out here tonight. And, uh, and I was, I, like I said, I was checking his Facebook page and they're asking for prayers. So Mike, uh, we're thinking about you and it's, uh, it's always super tough. And uh, if you're thinking about it, if you know, Mike, maybe send him a little note of encouragement, just kind of encourage him in that way that, uh, that he might, um, he might be doing well. So Mike, we're thinking about you. Mark will be on with me next week, hopefully. And, uh, we'll be talking more food uh, on that side, the grilling food. Mark has been doing Tons of school and preparation around that. I'll, I'll be honest. I could use all the help I can do. So there's some preparation tricks. We know how to feed the pellets in and get the grills to the right temperature and get them smoked or the, some of those kind of things that we do. But Mark's going to bring some good kind of midsummer tips as we're thinking about how to prepare some of those things and just kind of how to enjoy kind of the great outdoors. So, Mike, anything else you add before we go? No. I'm uh, I'm sad I have to miss it. Yeah, but I would. Yeah, darn it. I know. Um, well, let me, let me maybe let me talk to. I don't want you to miss this. Like we've missed you a couple times on this. So let me, let me talk to to uh, to Mark and see where we're going. The week after, uh, Edward is back. So it's time to get Edward Weniger back on All here right. and talk a little bit about crypto. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of been chomping at the bit to come back on. And then uh, Micah uh, is coming back here. This will be great. Micah's coming back August fifteenth. She has been looking at a bunch of different office tech, and uh, she's like, hey, dude, I need to come back in and talk about this. So Micah will be back August 15th. With that, don't forget about our Patreon link if you want to support the show. Remember, if you are if you do a $5, you get a coin. So we'll send that to you as well, a little $5 Patreon. Subscribe there. I don't know why I can't talk very well tonight, but it, I'm not finishing <laughs> any of the sentences. Maybe it's the Guinness. Uh, I want to thank you for doing that. Theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon. Join our Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord. You can send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. If you want to do that as well, join the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash theaverageguy. I'm seriously thinking about just shutting that group off. Just to be honest with you, the traffic is, since we opened Discord, the yeah. traffic on the Facebook group has completely died. And I would have no problem shutting that off. So that may be coming up. If you're adamantly opposed to me shutting that off, let me know. Just send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. But I think we may be shutting that down here in the next couple months. Don't forget theaverageguy.tv, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. Of course, that's Christian. Visit maplegrovepartners.com. Don't forget, you can listen to us on the mobile app, homegadgetgeeks.com, if you want to do it that way. 
we, uh, my daughter's home for the summer, Mike, and we are still enjoying those big boxes of HelloFresh. Um, in fact, tonight she, we made spaghetti on Tuesday night. We had a whole bunch of it left over. There's spaghetti. Just I don't know what it is. It's just that thing, that stuff multiplies uh, as you're making it. It's super good. So tonight a little wine, a little zucchini uh, spaghetti, which is good. Mm-hmm. Be kind of good to grill that zucchini in advance and then throw Ooh, that in. That would be spaghetti. really good. I'm I, grilled vegetables and me. I just, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. So um, still have still have um, uh, Hello Fresh coupons if you want to jump in. If you want to give it a try, you've been thinking about summer's the great time to do it. Basically three meals a week. I'll, I'll give you something that gets you the whole week nearly for free. I don't make anything off. I don't really want to, but it has been so great. We've still got one bag in the fridge. Sammy's gone. I get super spoiled because she, she every five thirty every day she starts dinner when she's home. Like no questions asked. Are you sure she, you need to go back to school? Can you just stay here? Right. It's like having a chef. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It's super great tonight when we got home. Sarah was pulling a bag. I'm like, can't we just have leftovers? Can we just have the leftover spaghetti? She was like, oh. That's okay. The other thing we've done is we keep those little dinner rolls. They're little twisted dinner rolls. They're frozen. We just yeah. keep, a, you can buy them by the box. Yep. Like, toss those in in 10 minutes. You got fresh rolls. Oh. So spaghetti, leftover spaghetti and, uh, and dinner rolls tonight was uh, super good. And then I did a call with Australia and Japan, which was super cool off my phone. What a miracle it is that we live in a day when I can take this phone and set it up at the kitchen table with a glass of wine. Make a call to Australia and Japan at the same time. It's have a conversation with them that they can hear. Uh, in real time. In real time. We're going to launch a new show in Japan, which is super cool. So oh, very nice. Pretty, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So not not this tech stuff, but the stuff I do with Gallup. Right. And uh, so pretty cool. So let me know if you want, want to that, uh, jump in on the HelloFresh. Super good. And we'd love to, love to help you do that. We are live every Thursday. 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern now at theaverageguy.tv slash live. Don't forget to check the show notes for this show. We'll have full transcripts. Love your feedback on that as well. If you even care, I don't know why you would, but maybe you do. We'll be back next Thursday. If you're listening live, stay around. We've got a little update on crypto. Uh, We'll do that in five or six or seven minutes. Uh, But with that, we'll say goodbye.